welcome everyone to uh, our time Tuesday night at Word of Faith. Um, I'm going to continue on with this book, um, The uh, Supernatural Prayer Life by Nancy Dufresne. And I'm going to do a chapter on the spirit of prayer. Mm. And I'm only going to do about half of it because it's a long chapter and there's a lot in it, like always. Um, so we start off with Hebrews 4, 15, and 16, which says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. And it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So Jesus is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And infirmities, I just found out not that long ago, just doesn't mean our sicknesses. It means yeah. everything. It yeah. means that we're deprived. It means everything. everything. Uh, so he feels what we feel. Mm -hmm. And as we enter into, it's a great privilege that we are allowed to come to the throne of grace mm -hmm. and that we are, that God uses us as intercessors or as prayers to, um, to, come to him in, in the place of somebody that is not perhaps doesn't know how to get to the throne of grace, right? Mm -hmm. We feel the agony of the Holy Spirit. And, and this explains sometimes like when we have intercession come upon us, you don't always know, especially at the first, what it really is, but it's the Holy Spirit reaching out. There's agony that the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is... is um, portraying us, that we're yep. getting the agony that he feels, mm -hmm. <coughs> and we're reaching out to God on behalf of others. That's that's mm -hmm. what that feeling, or that, if you want to call it a feeling, but when you get something in your spirit that you don't know exactly what it is, mm -hmm. and it, it's the Holy Spirit that is agonizing with somebody that is going through something or a situation, mm -hmm. right? When we sense in our spirits this great longing of the spirit, through us on behalf of another, we know what we're to do. And so what are we to do? We're to go boldly mm -hmm. to the throne of grace yes. so that we may obtain, and we're obtaining for somebody else. We're interceding for somebody else or some situation. And we come to that throne of grace because on behalf of somebody that does not know perhaps how to get to that throne of grace mm -hmm. or doesn't even believe that of going to the throne yeah. of grace. That throne is a place of obtaining, mm -hmm. and we've learned that <coughs> before. Mm -hmm. And as we know, there's no need that goes unmet at the throne. So how are we to come before the throne? One way is to lift up others in the spirit by praying in other tongues for those people. Yes. And as the Holy Spirit moves upon us in love and compassion. She said, as she began to grow and develop in spiritually over the years, God began to grow her prayer life. And we all know that from experience as we get further along in our spiritual lives that our prayer life becomes more further along, right? Or it should be. Um, she said she began to have experiences that she didn't understand. And, and I'm sure we've all been at that place. And she said it involved the spirit of prayer coming on her. And she didn't know at first what it, what it really was. She said, I was untaught in the areas. And she said, I didn't know fully how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit or even know what was happening. And I mean, there are times, for instance, on Saturday, I spent the whole day in tears. Mm -hmm. Not, I, I still don't know what it was over, but mm -hmm. there are days and there's times yeah. that you <coughs> agonize. Mm -hmm. There are things come upon you. There's mm -hmm. times that you can pray as you go through the day, there are times that you have to take the time and you have to, mm -hmm. it depends on how <coughs> much of a burden that you have, how, mm -hmm. how we're really supposed to respond to that, yes. right? Amen. She said Amen. over the years that she's learned and has learned to become faithful and, to, and the Holy Spirit has guided her and taught her as well as other, I'm sure other people have taught her. She said, I share some of these experiences in hopes that she will help some of us, right? Um, to know what she went through and what she experienced. She said, because I didn't understand the things I was experiencing, she said, I was greatly troubled. And that can happen. You can, you can think that you have the problem, yeah. That, yeah. that it's upon you, that you are having the symptoms, that mm -hmm. you are experiencing whatever. Mm -hmm. And the enemy can use that. Yeah. He can... He can 
bring that upon you so that you think it's it's you and it's not for somebody else. She said, when I started having some of the stronger feelings or experiences in prayer, she said it was after they were married. And of course, she was just newly born again and, say, and filled with the Holy Ghost. So she said, they would go to overseas to and take trips. And she said, I would get this overwhelming sense of heaviness, depression, sadness, and grieving. And she said, I didn't know what it was. She said, I thought that I was experiencing those situations and she said I became greatly troubled by it and she said I had this great sense of heaviness and but it was a burden of prayer that was actually moving upon her but she didn't know that at the time and she said the devil took advantage of that of the lack of her uh, knowledge and he bombarded me with thoughts and that's what the enemy yeah. does is yeah. if he can get us into mm -hmm. the mental yeah. arena yeah. then he can whip us yeah. but if yes. we keep him in the faith arena or the spiritual Arena, then we we defeat him. Yes. But he kept her at first in the in the mental, like in the, the arena, because he thoughts would come upon her that something was wrong with her, and that the enemy was attacking her when in fact it, it wasn't that at all. The greatest weapon our enemy uses is the power of suggestion, hmm. and he suggests thoughts to us, yeah. and if we don't recognize it from him and take authority over those thoughts, yes. then he gains entrance into our thought life mm -hmm. and it will yield, it will give up our peace. Like yeah. we give up our peace if we allow that yeah. to happen. Yeah. The enemy was seeking to keep me out of the spirit arena. And I already had mentioned about the mental arena and the, and the spiritual. So he, he seeks to hold us in that mental arena. Mm -hmm. And because if we don't yield to the spirit of God, then we're really not of much use, right? Mm -hmm. Because we lose our effectiveness mm -hmm. if we keep in that mental, or in mm -hmm. that, not mental, but mental mm -hmm. arena in our thought life, right? Mm -hmm. I should have yielded to the spirit of prayer by praying in tongues and resisted those attacks. And this comes back to last week, we talked about um, how we, we, our mind, we, we don't dwell on things, and she said, by uh, by uh, answering the troubled things with the word, right? We're to answer with the word, mm -hmm. to, work, to quiet our minds, mm -hmm. and to work, focus, focus our attention on those on our spirits. Yes. But instead, she said, I was in the mental arena. The Holy Spirit was endeavoring to have her cooperate, and she wasn't she wasn't understanding that mm -hmm. that's what it was. She said. Praying in tongues is what we do, and we cooperate with the Holy Spirit in prayer. E.W. Kenyon describes the same prayer burden in his book, In His Presence, and he often mm -hmm. talks about intercession that cannot be uttered with words or in words. Oftentimes we're depressed, and we don't understand, or we don't see the reason for why we feel the way we do, or what, how our spirits are heavy, or they're... Um, whatever is going on. And she said, it is the Holy Spirit in agony reaching through us to the Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it actually is. And if our spirits were only fruitful, perhaps we would understand the language and agony of the Spirit. And so sometimes we don't understand. Yeah. Because our, we're not we're not in that um, spirit arena where we're always we're in the natural right yeah. when the burden of prayer moves on a believer we are to give ourselves to praying in tongues mm -hmm. and this i mean we can't hear this enough because that we need to be reminded yeah. because that's what it, that's what we do because then we know we're, we're praying mm -hmm. in the perfect will of god yeah. we're praying in tongues and our praying is a it, there's something accomplished when we're praying in tongues when the spirit of prayer will lift and and Another thing that happens when that lifts, and I'm sure we've all experienced it, you might sing in tongues, you might start laughing, or you just seem light. I mean, mm -hmm. when you have when you have prayed through, and that's yeah. what they used to call it, yeah. praying through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said the old timers called it that, but you get a release. You know that there is a breakthrough, <clears throat> and the, and you feel light, or you happy, or you can even dance, right? <laughs> And so she said, because I was a spiritual baby, I didn't understand those things that were happening. 
And she said those things would stay on her for days because she didn't know what mm -hmm. to do with it. And how many times have we had things perhaps that if we had prayed yeah. through wouldn't yeah. have been on us for yeah. days. Yeah. And as she was saying when she was a baby, spiritual baby, she didn't understand. She thought that she had those symptoms were uh, yep. on her. Mm -hmm. And that um, and a lot of times we take it as an attack from the enemy yep. in us and, and it's not. Yeah. Right? Yep. She said if I had only known how to cooperate and there are days that we don't cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Certainly there's day more days that we do, but there are times that we don't cooperate. Mm -hmm. If our spirits were more sensitive, we need sensitive spirits. Yes. I would have recognized it as a spiritual leading and not as an attack. Yes. How important is it for us to re receive instruction in this matter on how mm -hmm. to cooperate with so that we can bear much fruit in prayer. So there, if we can bear much fruit, there is also, we bear mm -hmm. little fruit, right, in our prayer life. So mm -hmm. all of these things help us to, to know, to learn more, and how we can be fruitful and we can produce mm -hmm. in, in the spirit, mm -hmm. of, like praying for people, because it matters. Yes. It matters. In the life of Samuel, and she uses this experience, this, um, and we know all about Samuel, what happened to Samuel when he was in the temple serving, how he went to sleep one night, and the Lord called his name, yep. but he thought it was Eli. And he went three times yep. to Eli, and Eli each time sent him back. But the, the third time when he went, Eli perceived. Yep. It took Eli three times to <laughs> perceive that it was God trying to get Samuel's attention, right? Mm -hmm. And to recognize, and he told him, what to do. And so Samuel responded to that voice all along, right? The whole he knew somebody was calling him, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't know who it was. Yeah. Right? So he responded to the voice. And he but he responded wrongly. So she it, it, this is a good little lesson because yeah. he didn't recognize the Lord. Like mm -hmm. we can we can respond to a voice mm -hmm. but sometimes we don't we don't recognize it as the Lord speaking mm -hmm. to us, right? Yeah. And he was calling to him. So if, if you don't recognize the dealings of God in the, your life, we won't respond rightly. Yes. If we don't recognize mm -hmm. God. That's right. What was Samuel's help in this situation? It was Eli's instruction to him. And the third time he told Eli what to do. And we find that in 1 Samuel 3, 9. It says, therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he shall call thee, if he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and he laid down in his place. He did as he was instructed by Eli, and the Lord continued to speak to Samuel, and he gave him the message that he was trying to give him mm -hmm. all along, right? Yeah. We need to notice in this incident that although the Lord called Samuel's name, until Samuel recognized that it was the Lord's voice, and until he responded rightly to that voice, no. he didn't get the message yeah. that yeah. God was trying to tell him, right? Mm -hmm. He was responding, but he wasn't responding rightly. He didn't recognize God mm -hmm. in it. What if Samuel had stayed in bed and not got up at all, yeah. and didn't respond at all to the voice? wondering who was calling me. If he never responded at all by going to Eli, he wouldn't have received instruction mm -hmm. on how to properly respond. As the Spirit of God began to teach her, she said, I began to take special note of what other ministers were saying. Kenyon's notes in his writings, um, he would wake up feeling depressed. And we can, and usually the mornings or nights, are the times that your spirit perceives more and it's more, um, oh, it's less active. Your mind is less active. Mm -hmm. So you are, you're perceiving or you're hearing more. And she said that is the times that a lot of these people would, would get depression, would get a, some kind of a, a feeling come upon them. And it was, it was the Lord and the lifting up a burden from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Also notice that those feelings of depression would sometimes come upon me in the mornings. Charles Finney.
Finney was a mighty revivalist, and yes. he lived in the 1800s. Yes. And he often referred in his autobiography that his mind would become greatly troubled. Mm -hmm. after, but after he gave himself to prayer, he would grow peaceful and calm. And how many times has that happened that when you give in to prayer and you start praying no. that there is a peace yeah. or a calmness that comes? Yes. I've learned that when my mind seems troubled and unsettled, that it's my spirit that is troubled and unsettled. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's, that's mm -hmm. something. That's a good thought. Mm -hmm. It is good because you can you can say, okay, God, I'm, un my, my, I'm, un <coughs> I'm troubled and I'm unsettled. So... Is that something that you're trying to get yeah. through to me to yeah. about somebody else, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. As I take time to pray in tongues, that troubling leaves me, and I have perfect peace. Mm -hmm. And I've had that troubling in my spirit last for days, she mm -hmm. said. And then she talked about a heavier spirit of prayer coming on, and uh, she said, I would leave aside what I was doing, and I would lift the burden up on my heart to the Lord. And if that burden stayed for hours mm. or even days, she said, I, and I had other daily responsibilities, I would go aside as often as possible and pray. And, mm -hmm. and um, then she said when the spirit, when there was a heavier spirit on me, she said there were days that I would just set aside my responsibilities or a lot of my responsibilities and I would spend most of the day praying. She said it depends on on that burden that you have. Mm -hmm. Other times that the spirit of prayer wasn't heavy on her, she said I could work through the day, do her daily duties, and pray, yeah. like uh, often pray. Yeah. So it just depends on what what spirit of heaviness or what mm -hmm. that we have on us. Um, but she always prayed in tongues. She always prayed in tongues, and she said I was able to pray until she sensed the lifting. So sometimes it doesn't take a long time yep. to sense that lifting. Sometimes mm -hmm. it takes longer. And she gives a couple of incidents, uh, instances of ministers. She said one minister um, was led to pray for a loved one. And about five minutes after the Lord had given him this person to pray for, his phone rang and he went and left his prayer and went and did this, this job that this phone call had asked him to do. And a couple of hours later, he received a phone call saying that that loved one had been killed in an accident. He said it was the same loved one that we were praying for. Mm. If we're too busy with the natural things, we can miss the leading yes. of the Spirit, yes. and it can cost us much. Mm -hmm. There have been times when I've missed the leading. I had a relative, she said she hadn't seen for decades, and it and how many times have I mentioned and we know that the name comes to you? Mm -hmm. Just out of the blue that you perhaps haven't seen or haven't heard of in decades. That she said she was getting dressed one morning and this name came up. And she said, all I did was reminisce. She said, I never prayed for the person. She said, I reminisced of how we played together as children. And then she said, I failed to pray for them. And about a week later, she had somebody notify her that um, this person had died. She was in her mid-40s and left a husband and two kids. It was the same relative that the Spirit had given her to pray for, and I missed the leading of that. What was the cue the Spirit gave her? That person's name, mm -hmm. or that person came up in front mm -hmm. of yeah. I didn't have a sense of urgency. She said, she wasn't, she said it, it wasn't an urgent matter. I didn't sense that that person's life was in danger, but she said, if I had prayed, it would have changed the situation. She said, I'm sure it would have. Mm -hmm. We will miss cues by the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We must spend time speaking in tongues so that we will keep our spirit sensitive mm -hmm. to the Spirit. Mm -hmm. There's too much to be lost if we don't. Mm -hmm. However, there's, we, all we do is repent if we mm -hmm. do, right? God's a merciful God, mm -hmm. and, and then we go on. Mm -hmm. um, she said after this person had died, that um, she was leading prayer one night at church, and the Lord spoke to her and said, I want you to be a watchman for your, over your family. The life of your relative could have been spared if 
he would have cooperated. So he said, their situation could have changed. Now, there are some things in our families or our relatives or friends that we cannot change mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. We can't change. But there are things that we can change. Yeah. Um, he told her, you couldn't have, you can't change every situation, but some situations can be mm -hmm. changed, and I expect them to be changed. Mm -hmm. So he expects us to change, to stand in the gap, mm -hmm. to intercede for people. Mm -hmm. There would be some things I would be able to, unable to change that they would have to do, those, that person would have to do, mm -hmm. that I could not change for them. But there are situations that her faith and in the changing, the things could be changed by her using her faith mm -hmm. and by praying. And he expects them to be changed. God expects when he puts somebody on our hearts or a situation mm -hmm. that we, we need to be praying for mm -hmm. a change. Right? Yes, amen. Since God has deposited and imparted, imparted so much of his word into us, he expects us to use that to bring blessing and to help others. What did God mean by saying he was making me a watchman or accountable to be a watchman? In Isaiah 62, 6 and 7, it says, I have set watchmen upon your walls. And I learned something from the scripture. I guess I never paid attention to it. And I always thought a watchman was watching for, for problems or watching for the mm -hmm. enemy. But this is not what God's saying here in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Saying, I set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, who will never hold their peace day and night. And you are his servants, and by your prayers, you put the Lord in remembrance of his promises. Keep you in silence, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her praise in the earth. So those watchmen are not watching for the enemy. Mm -hmm. They are there to put God in remembrance of his word mm -hmm. and what he's promised. They are watching to make sure his word is fulfilled and they continue to hold God's word up to him until they see the word fulfilled in mm -hmm. lives, in our families, in homes, and situations. So that's what some watchmen are, are called to mm -hmm. be, are to keep God in remembrance or put him in remembrance of his word mm -hmm. so that those words can be um, applied and you can see the fruit in your families and your lives and mm -hmm. situations. How long were the watchmen to remind God? They were to remind him until he established them and made them a place of praise on the earth. Mm -hmm. You are to hold God's word up to him, reminding him of his promises until mm -hmm. that which you love and care about, that which you're praying about, becomes a place where God's will is being mm -hmm. accomplished. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just one more story before I end. This um, tells about a pastor that uh, went to preach in, on a Sunday morning, and the Lord, he, he had symptoms. He had heart symptoms. And he thought they were his own heart symptoms. And so the Lord told him, right, and told him after he got the symptoms, he said, I want you to go down and pray for Pastor W um, for his healing. And this pastor decided, and he still had the symptoms, so, and he said, I'm gonna go after my, my own servants. And what happened? That pastor that he was to pray for died of a heart attack in the pulpit. Oh my. And he said, the mi and the minister realized that the symptoms had stopped in his body when he got that message. Mm. And he perceived all along what he was sensing was not his symptoms, mm -hmm. but that pastor's symptoms. Yeah. He had missed God by not going to pray for the other pastor. Mm -hmm. God was looking for someone to cooperate with him. Mm -hmm. And we all fail. We all mm -hmm. miss it. Yep. Right? So, yep. so, and what you do is you just go to God, mm -hmm. confess, repent, and, and we keep on going. Because we can't, we can't carry what, what mm -hmm. we've missed. Yep. You know? And yep. God is a merciful and a gracious God, and, and uh, we just have to pick up and do mm -hmm. the next time and make sure that we pray for that situation mm -hmm. or that person. Yeah. Right? Amen. Amen. Okay. Can I share something? Sure can. I'll just come up there to get it on the camera. <coughs> just two things that I was reminded of. And I'll just share those things. Uh, this past Saturday, you know, it was quite a warm day, 
And when you're single and all by yourself, sometimes you just sit around in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to town, put my clothes on to town, went to the market, and it was warm in the house, and so I was just uh, kind of uncomfortable, and I didn't, have, didn't really want to turn the air conditioner on yet, so I just had gotten down into my skivvies, and, <laughs> and, I, and I knew somebody was going to come and ring the doorbell. Oh. I knew it. And so, but I kept thinking, well, with COVID, the Jehovah Witnesses aren't coming around in the morning, so they're not coming either, so uh, it's probably just me. And so, uh, I went a good part of the day, and I decided, well, I, I needed to go to town for something. So I went to town for something, came back. It was still warm in the house, and I got down in my skivvies again. And just, and I thought, no, but you don't know, somebody's going to come to the door. And at seven o'clock, somebody rang my doorbell. <laughs> and by the time I tried, I was taking too long to put your pants on, so I. I grab my bathrobe, and then it takes me a while to do stairs, and I have yeah. to go slow downstairs. And so by the time I got down there, uh, it was Noami's parents, and they were pulling out of the driveway. Oh, dear. And so I felt really bad that uh, uh, they had come, and I didn't answer the door. So uh, I had some things for them, so I just I got dressed and, <laughs> and went over and dropped them off to them, told them I was there. Oh, dear. And see, I knew it already. See, but yeah. again, you just you talk yourself out of a lot of these things. and then. Brother Greg, he talks about when he was in his church in Alberta and uh, uh, he had shut all the doors and everything and, and he'd been praying and then he went to the back of the church and was sitting there with his hands on the back of the pew and was praying some more and the six angels walked in and two went to the front, two went in the middle and two stayed in the back with mm -hmm. him. And they turned to him and said, we are here to protect the presence of God and the glory of God. And, uh, and so then he, he prayed deep intercession for a couple of hours. In fact, he said he hurt for two or three days. He prayed so deep. So the other day I called him about that. I got to thinking about it. And I called him and asked him, I said, well, what, what was the purpose of those angels coming? And he said it was to protect the presence and the glory of God. I said, but why? Why? Mm -hmm. He said, so, so I could pray that deep intercession without being interrupted. Because the people always were coming by. They saw the car. Yeah. They were always coming there. And so there was a reason that, that the angels had to show up in, in mass so he could pray that deep prayer of intercession. So I thought that was yeah, kind of that interesting. Is, yeah. So, so they will they will block mm. some interference for us. Wow. So yeah. uh, I'm glad I went and talked to him about yeah. that because I, I never I'm thinking well it must be something really grand and lofty out there that I haven't caught yet. And <laughs> what he said it was yeah. quite simple. Yeah. And so uh, the angels are there to protect the presence. <laughs> so see see what what is this that you were teaching? Satan wants to come and disrupt. Yeah. He wants to get us sidetracked. So we can't get into those deeper places of prayer, okay? And so there were some things that had to be prayed through. Yes. That that were going to require six angels to be there to mm -hmm. keep keep yes. the people away, so that could be done. So that was that's, it. That's neat. Yeah. That is. I've never. I never even thought about. It. I just when yeah. you said the glory and the presence. That's just awesome lessons. Yes. I just I love it. Uh, yeah. Those books did all come in, so I have all the books, and we'll make them available tomorrow yeah. evening. That's, That's what it, I was folks. talking about yesterday, last week. That's what I was trying. I couldn't say it because that's 